Hi, my name is Sandra Mitchell and I work at Third Party Format QA. I'm here to show you a cool move for Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2002. The move is how to get set up for a double eagle on a par 5 course. This cool move is on Tiger's Dream Course and it's on hole number 10. Okay, what you want to do instead of pointing the way that they start you out, you want to turn the face towards this mist. And if you put the marker back as far as it can go, or on the island with a pin, you should be able to make it one shot. That shot just set an all-time record. Now, if you're really good or just really lucky, you'd be able to make a hole in one on the first shot. But from this point, it should be fairly easy to get a double eagle. Good luck. Hi, my name is Sandra Mitchell, and I'm from Format QA. And I'm here to show you a cool move on Gravity Games Bike. It's how to complete the high score task on each level using one combo move. What you want to do is go through the game and find an area that has a lip so that you can do a peg stall on it. And you want to do a peg stall, jump, and then keep hitting the triangle button to do it over and over again. And what it does is make one huge combo move that scores a lot of points so you can beat them all in one try. And you beat both the tasks. Now this trick is more useful in the later levels when you have to score higher. You can just keep doing the trick after the timer stopped. Hi, my name's Sandra Mitchell and I'm from Format QA. I'm here to show you a cool move for World Tour. I'm going to show you how to score a really high point total using one combo move. Okay, what you want to do is jump, put yourself into a manual, and just keep doing it over and over, jump manual, jump manual. If you're on somewhere that's sort of a slope, you can do it and it'll just keep spinning you around and around. Otherwise, if you're on a flat area, it'll make you roll forward and you might crash. But doing this, you can, you can beat the objectives really easily. And you can open up extra costumes and uh, bike colors. Now this combo move is something that you're going to have to master early on, because when you fight the last boss, you're going to have to score over a million points. Good luck. Hi, my name is Sandra Mitchell, and I'm here to show you a cool move for Dr. Muto. On Planet Flotus, I'm going to show you how to get credit for completing objective Cut the Chains without actually completing it. Okay, when you're in the master plan, it shows the objective Cut the Chains isn't completed. You're standing on the edge of the lava pit, you want to jump down. Go to the furthest rock out in the middle of the lava pit. You want to stand on the very edge of the rock. Turn around and face the ledge you want to jump up to. Morph into the spider. Then you want to aim here, your reticule at the biker guy, and as soon as it turns red, you want to let go of the X button. Once you grab the piece of Terra, go back into your master plan. And it'll show that you've completed the objective, cut the chains, even though you haven't done it. Now when you do this move, there's three things that you have to remember. When you jump into the lava, it's going to take life away, but it's not going to be enough to make you die. Once you get to the rock, you want to look to your left, there's going to be some enemies coming. You have to kill them off first, otherwise they'll kill you when you're trying to do this move. Then when you face the ledge, the targeting reticule is only going to turn red for a couple of seconds, so you have to make sure you time it well and do it fast. Good luck and have fun. Hi, my name's Sandra Mitchell, and I'm here to show you a cool move for Hitman 2. I'm going to show you how to get through Mission St. Petersburg Revisited without getting shot at by the sniper. Okay, what you want to do is from the level start position, just bypass the locker in the metro station, and you want to run all the way outside. And there's going to be a fork in the building. You can either go left or straight. You want to stay straight. And then once you get outside, you want to turn to your right. 
and run this way. What we're doing is running into uh, the right side of the Pushkin building. And once you get up here, you want to stay away from the entrance, otherwise the sniper will shoot at you. But if you go to the edge of the wall and look up into the middle window, you can see the sniper standing up there. You want to turn around, stay out of his sight, and go all the way back the way you came. Across the street over there is the, the point where you came out. So what you want to do is go straight up now, you're going to go into the main entrance of the Pushkin building. If you look up above the door to the right, that's the window that the sniper would be looking out of. Okay, before you go into this room, he's up to the right. You want to equip the fiber wire so you can choke him. And then so he doesn't hear you, you want to sneak, once you get to the door, sneak all the way in the room and then you kill him from behind. Now at the beginning of the mission, Dana's gonna tell you to go to the locker and get a gun. What you wanna do is bypass that. Just follow the steps that I told you. The guards won't be alerted and you can sneak up on the sniper without him ever seeing you. Good luck. Hi, my name is Sandra Mitchell. Today I'm going to show you a cool move for Harvest Moon, Save the Homeland. I'm going to teach you how to steal without being caught. Alright, what you need to do is go to the Brownie Farm, talk to Bob behind the counter and ask him for a part-time job. He'll give you some tools to use and you just go down to the field automatically. Once you're down here, you want to brush all the horses and brush the cow and milk the cow also. Make sure you get every single one, otherwise it's not going to pay you as much. Then once you're done milking and brushing, run over to the barn. You have to go inside to where you're supposed to feed the animals. Go over to the fodder dispenser. And when you get the fodder out, you want to put it in your backpack. And just keep doing this until the fodder's all gone. Once you're done, you want to run up the trail, go speak to Bob again so you can get your money. He pays you the full amount. It's usually around $200. He gives you the milk and he pays you for feeding them even though you didn't. You get to keep the milk and you stole all the animal's food. And if you look in your pouch, there's the fodder. Now, except for days that it's raining and days that Bob's store is closed, you want to steal as often as you can because stealing is a lot more fun than working and it's a lot easier also. Hi, my name's Sandra Mitchell and I have a cool move for you for Final Fantasy X submitted by Gamer Advisory Panel member Nick Watson. I'm going to show you how to heal your elemental Aeons. Okay, when you have Yuna selected, you want to go ahead and summon one of your elemental Aeons. I'll use a unicorn. It's a while for them to come out. Okay, you can attack the monster. He 
he'll attack you back. If you don't die, you can go ahead and use your black magic. You want to use thunder or thundara, which is the element that you are. Lightning, thunder. And instead of using it on the monster, use it on your Aeon. And it should heal your life. So that's how you heal your elemental Aeons. Thanks, Nick. You're a cool guy. Hi, my name is Sandra Mitchell, and today I'm going to show you how to easily pass Bomb Surprise on Starsky and Hutch. Okay, from the start of the mission, make sure you have your characters in third-person view, because it's really hard to do if you're in first. As you're driving along, make sure you grab all the turbo power-ups, because you need a lot of speed to finish this mission. If you miss some of the VR point power-ups, it really doesn't matter because you'll get a lot when you get to the next objective. You come around this turn, you're going to drive into the courtyard. You'll see the van over on your left, just cut through the grass because you'll catch up with him a lot faster. When you're behind the van, he's going to throw bombs out at you. Just shoot the bombs while you're grabbing all the power-ups at the same time. It's okay if you miss a few of the bombs, just make sure you get the majority of them. Now this power-up right here is really important in the turbo because you have to catch up with him on the street before he turns left on the alleyway. When you catch up to him, push him past the alley and you'll want to stop him from going back down there. When you have him in front of you, just keep shooting at him and pushing him down the street. That way he can't turn around and he can't go past you. It takes a while to defeat him, but just keep shooting him and shooting him and eventually he'll die. Now if you wait till the reticule turns red, you can kill him a lot faster because your sure shots earn you more VR points and they do a little more damage than if you just kept shooting him over and over. At this point you don't have to worry about your VR points dropping because you're not getting any bombs thrown at you because while he's stuck like this he doesn't throw any bombs off the back. Make sure you stay in front of him the whole time because if he gets away he'll go back to the alley. Now his life bar is almost down, just keep shooting him until he explodes. And that's how you do it. And now you've completed the secondary objective also because he wasn't throwing any bombs while you had him trapped pushed backwards like that. Now when you start this mission, if you use a limo, it's a lot easier to pull off the move. If you follow all the steps that I've told you, it'll not take you all day. And if you do pull it off, you'll feel like you've died and gone to heaven. Hi, my name is Sandra Mitchell, and today I'm going to show you how to bypass ghosts on Fatal Frame 2. Alright, when the ghosts appear, just turn around and run towards a door. Go inside the door, turn around and just exit the door right away. And all the little ghosts went bye bye. Now this move is really useful if you're in nightmare mode because the ghosts are a lot harder. You can use it just about anywhere in the game except for bosses because you can't exit out when you're fighting them. Good luck! Hi, my name is Sandra Mitchell, and today I'm going to show you how to evade Rock Krakadon's rolling attack in Samurai Jack. Okay, when you're fighting a Krakadon, just dodge all of his attacks. He's going to hit the ground, you have to dodge the selectites. And then once he opens his chest, hit him and run towards the crates near the lava. Now there's one crate here that he can't break, so if you just stand behind it, he can't get you with his rolling attack. And then once he gets out of the ball, run away so he doesn't break the top crates. Keep dodging him. And basically just follow the same steps over and over again. And easy, you only have to hit him about three times. But in hard mode, you have to hit him 
probably about 15 times, and this makes it a whole lot easier if you don't get hit. And that's how you defeat Rokrakadon. Have fun and good luck. Hi, I'm Sandra Mitchell, and today I'm going to show you the quickest way to collect helmets on Asterix and Obelix. Okay, from the starting point at Normandy, you just want to run down the hill to the cave. It's hard to aim, but you have to stay in line and make sure you collect all the multiplier points because you'll rack in a lot of points at the very bottom. If you're good and you aimed well, you can get your multiplier up to around 30 points, which really counts for a lot when you get these golden helmets for 10 points at the bottom. Then when you're at the bottom, go over to the platform. You want to launch yourself back up to the top of the hill. Run back through the cave and up to the save point. Then you want to save your game and then quit out to the great map. Now when you quit out to the great map, you can keep going to this level over and over again. And you can earn a, an average of about 10,000 points each time you go in, which helps you unlock all the unlockables throughout this game. Have fun! Hi, my name is Sandra Mitchell, and today I'm going to show you how to get a guaranteed out in MLB Slugfest Loaded. Okay, now that you have a runner on first base, you want to throw to first base and let the runner hit you. Once you drop the ball, grab it and throw it immediately to second, and you can get him out every single time. Now this cool move only works in Slugfest mode with just one runner on first base, and since I'm not cool enough to come up with a cool move on my own. I'd like to thank Eric Cobbs for this one.